it's a good thing that we're doing this now because if we did it any later um they're very observant in this kind of area and they have a neighborhood watch so we might just get reported it's like kirsten bosch all over again <laughs> This is what the fluff. We're currently in Bergfleet at the tiniest wetland in the world. Try and prove to me that there is a smaller wetland somewhere. You guys will see later. It's minute. We take a waddle around. So today uh, I have two stories that I want to talk about. One of them has to do with your nostrils. Not your Mine nostrils. in particular? No, <laughs> no, not yours in particular. And then the other one I have has to do with International Day of the Girl Child, which is today. Hey. Well, for you guys, it would be last week. Well, I look like a teenager that yes. fell out of the 80s today. It's adorable. And I'm digging out, though. Yeah, girl. Well, I'm digging out, you know. The 80s called. They wanted just to tell you you're killing it, so... <laughs> I'm um, I don't know. Do you want to start off with creepy stuff? Because that's kind of my forte. <laughs> you want to start with creepy stuff? Yeah. See, the closer we get to Halloween, guys, the more we're just going to talk about creepy stuff because Tam hates me. She does. If you guys watch, Every watch the vlog. Of my soul. <laughs> she is secretly, not so secretly, trying to kill me. I had a dream about this once where I was... It wasn't, I was kind of observing the, ob uh, the events, but there were these two YouTubers who were best friends and one of them goes missing. That one who went missing body is found and it turns out the other YouTuber killed them in a rage. Ooh, make a note, short film. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we've done this before on the podcast, but, but this, if it's creepy, uh -huh. this is... Uh, sort of lends into what we did last week of uh -huh. Disney theories. Disney conspiracies. Disney conspiracies. We could um, just turn this into a com conspiracy show. Can we? <laughs> oh my god, I think every week you need to come up with a new conspiracy. Not come up, but you need to present our audience with a new okay. What the Fluff conspiracy. That's your job okay. now. That's your job now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, hit me. This is the Disney version versus the original version okay of the fairy tale so some of them people will know already okay so let's just let's just let's just dive in shall we go for it one of the most fucked up ones yes that is completely like a childhood kind of a childhood dream movie sort of is pinocchio so pinocchio as a Disney movie, is also kind of a bit messed up. I mean, the part where they like have children smoking and drinking, Do and then I mean? they turn into gambling and yeah, you know, and just... then they turn into donkeys and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. The original version of Pinocchio, Pinocchio is an asshole. Like he is a puppet. Okay. Geppetto is his dad. Okay. But fairly early on in the story, he murders Jiminy Cricket. <gasps> no! He murders him. Jiminy Cricket was the only redeeming character in that entire film, without the little black and white cat and the goldfish. Yeah, because he was supposed to be his uh, conscience. Yes. And then Geppetto ends up going to jail for neglect. Um, for neglecting his son, who's a doll. And then when he comes back, he sold, sells his coat to buy books so that Pinocchio can go to school. And then Pinocchio sells those for theater tickets. Like, he's an asshole. And then the, the fox and the other one uh, in the movie. Oh, yes. The they fox. have like, that traveling show. They're yes. the ones that like kidnap mm. Pinocchio. Uh, they end up hanging him from a tree and then just leaving him there to suffocate. <laughs> but he's a puppet can he suffocate that's the weird thing i didn't understand i was like but he's a puppet how 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 i have um two other stories that were actually excluded from the current sort of volumes of the brothers Grimm. <laughs> so then along the lines of like cautionary tales two of the stories that have, were excluded were called um the children that played slaughter and they're fucked up 
So the first Coming version... out on Steam really soon, guys. Slaughter. <laughs> the first version is there are three kids. And they've seen... I mean, this was at the time where, you know, having an animal slaughtered in the home was kind of... Cash. Every day. Yeah. Thing. Cash. They didn't have refrigerators, mm -hmm. you know. Like, if you ask a kid now, where does the meat come from? They're Big not going to say a cow. It's <laughs> Bay. You know, where does milk come from? The bottle, you know. This was way back in the day where, you know, you keep your own animals and pigs mm -hmm. and cows and whatever. And you just, your chicken neck, chicken for dinner. Yeah. yeah. So they saw their dad butchering uh, a pig and then they decided that they wanted to play butcher. So there was a kid who was a butcher, the butcher's assistant, and the kid who was playing the pig. So while they were playing, the kid who was being the butcher killed the kid who was being the pig. So... Silence of the Lambs called! <laughs> <gasps> okay, right. So then, the people of the, the town hear about what's happening. This little kid goes on trial. But because they've never had anything like this happen before, they don't know what to do. So then one of the elders takes an apple and a gold coin and it holds them in each of his hand. Now the kid has to choose one. And then apparently if he chooses the apple, it means that it's a sign of he's still a naive child. He's just, you know, focusing on the good, delicious, yummy stuff that there was nothing sinister behind what he did. It was just an accident. But if he goes for the gold coin, he has some interest in value of, you know, material possessions and that his mind has been corrupted. So obviously once this is, is explained, the kid goes for the apple. <laughs> oh, so they explain, they held it, explain what each of them meant and then and go, then which like, did you pick? One. Instead of going choose one and then and then revealing like yeah. all Facebook quizzes do so obviously the kid's gonna choose the apple because yeah oh, I don't know he's not a dumbass <laughs> <laughs> and then like that's the end of the folksy tale so it's pretty gruesome but then the second one I think the question you from that one is don't leave your kids unsupervised which leads it to the next one okay which is also about these kids they see their dad butchering a cow and then there's it's a family of five so there's three kids and then mom dad mm. so dad they seen dad butchering a cow before and then he has to go to town to do whatever so it's just the kids and the mom at home the mom okay. is inside giving the smallest baby a bath yeah and then the eldest one and the middle child are outside now they want to play butcher as well this is not a popular game kids <laughs> do not play this guy <laughs> The older brother ends up killing the younger brother. The mother is inside, hears her child scream, abandons the baby in the bath, runs outside to see what her child has now done. In a fit of rage, picks up the knife, stabs her eldest child, then runs back inside to check on the baby to find that the baby has drowned in the bath water. She's stricken with grief, hangs herself, and then that dad comes home to this absolute, you know, bonanza. Do you imagine? <laughs> dad just got into town quick to go get some bread and milk, soups cash, <laughs> you know, and then comes home and everybody's dead. Right? The fuck? So it's like, the, in like a matter of seconds, it just degenerates from like, let's play make believe to everyone's dead. No, no, fam. No, that's so fucked. And that story just wasn't chosen out of all the other ones. That like, it one just, used that to be. It used to be in the Grimm's fairy tales. Mm. Obviously, it's been, like, curated over the years. A couple of times, I think yeah. the version that we get has, like, the most popular ones. Some mm. of the older, sort of, cautionary tales have been left out, <laughs> as you can see. Because <laughs> I think people actually genuinely read them to their kids now so what's your story uh is that enough what the fluff for you yo i'm i'm shook guys i'm so shook i almost don't want to talk about nostrils but i feel like i need to share this with you just because you don't go on facebook so the latest trend in fashion mm -hmm. right now apparently is nostril hair extensions what <laughs> So remember how like squiggly brows was kind of everyone was like yeah uh, I okay. thought that was and a the joke though. feathered brows just looked like yeah. caterpillars on your face so 
An Instagrammer with the handle Great Chen Chen posted two <laughs> pictures with what appears to be false eyelashes crawled around their nostrils. And this is going viral. That's amazing though. <laughs> that is so fucked. It literally looks like Daddy Long Legs it, climbing out of her nose. But like, ugh. no, like everyone does their utmost to make sure that there is nothing in the cave. That's why I was confused. A lot of people are like, no, this isn't a trend. Like people are just playing around or whatever. It's a lot like, do you remember the story we did about the beauty the beauty blogger? I don't even know if she was a beauty blogger. But uh, oh, wait, she, she used her boyfriend's yeah. balls to like do her makeup. And everyone's like, ah, this can't be. Once again, the makeup world is just like lost in shit over like so one person. If I understand the articles correctly, having stuck eyelash extensions up their nose. Can you imagine trying to peel that glue off though? Oh, oh, you, you're gonna just rip out your nose there. <laughs> Which is funny. Which is kind of... You're just going to have to put in more fake ones. Right. So yeah, so that's just a quick little WTF from the fashion world. I think people are just trying to come up with trains that make people go like WTF so that they get attention. So back onto serious things. Okay. Serious, serious things. Uh, today is the uh, Day of the Girl Child. So International Day of the Girl Child... Girl Child Day is celebrated on the 11th of October and this year's theme is uh, the power of the adolescent girl vision for 2030. So there are nearly 6 million girls aged 10 to 19 in the entire world, each with limitless individual potential. However, they are disappearing from public awareness and the international development agenda. So this year's theme is all about initiating programs that by 2030 will drastically reduce stats like how many girls are child brides, how many girls are victims of violence. Girls are more susceptible to things like HIV and being sold into slavery and just all of these programs are just to empower girls and to make sure that by 2030 all of these girls who are now little girls now when it's 2030 they will be empowered and they will be in positions where most women strike and fuggle Quickly before I start thinking about it again. <laughs> what was I saying? Um, that most <laughs> women struggle. <laughs> that most women fight and struggle to achieve. Now we have a real life example here where Tam, as a female animator, would fight and struggle more than her male counterparts in the animation industry because it's boys' town. Just as much as that is true for fluff in radio. So a Washington Examiner article says that, well they quote the UN, uh, saying that every 10 minutes somewhere in the world an adolescent girl dies as a result of uh, violence. In humanitarian emergencies gender-based violence often increases, subjecting girls to sexual and physical violence, child marriage, exploitation and trafficking. Adolescent girls in conflict zones are 90% more likely to be out of school when compared to girls in conflict-free zones, compromising their future prospects for work and financial independence as adults. There are a ton of days, um, a ton of events planned for today, and I just think that uh, we should all just take a minute, not today, but okay, maybe every day is asking a bit much because y'all are busy and things, but I think people should just be more aware of how much our girls and our children are just struggling in the world and just like reading all these facts and listening to all these facts it just it really makes me go like what the fuck like it's 2017 like we should we there shouldn't be a thing anymore yeah and i think it's it's proven that the more highly educated the women of a society are the more that that society progresses, mm -hmm. the faster it can progress. It definitely is beneficial in the long term for everyone. There's a lot of different ways that these problems can be looked at and solved. But I think the very first thing is not to just create a hashtag that everyone remembers once mm. a year. But I think the fact that today is the day that is starting all these different campaigns that will then tackle all these different problems and different angles, then it gives you multiple opportunities to get involved. Instead of just being like, 
hashtag International Gold Child Day. Yeah. I'm just going to make a Facebook frame and then be done with it. And then, yeah, there's a ton of organizations and things that are behind it. And I'm just, I'm excited to see what happens between now and 2030. Yeah. Guys, we need to work together to like lessen these statistics. Donate if you can donate or give your time or call people out on their shit. Whether yeah. it's in life or in social or yeah. on social media or whatever, because we need to stop the prejudices, we need to stop the stigmas, and we also just need to remember the girl child, guys. Because sometimes I think it can be overwhelming if you look at it from a global point of view. Mm -hmm. But if you just do things within your circle of influence, mm -hmm. um, just amongst your friends, work colleagues, anything. Like Fluff said, if you see something or, you know, call people out, try and make a difference, alter your behavior, something. Because it can be quite daunting to think about, you know, these girls who are vulnerable in conflict zones. You're not physically there. You can't physically do something for them. But if you just do something within your circle of influence every single day, it does make a difference. Mm -hmm. Amen. Man, it's really hard being a woman. Bro. It's so... Dude. <laughs> dude. Bro. Guy. <laughs> Guy. It's yeah. so hard being a girl. And I just think if we can reach a point where our little girls don't have to fight on a daily basis like we do, just to kind of constantly remind the world that we're here and like not feel obliged to be nice, for example, among so many other things... I just I think that there's so much more that we can do and I'm really glad that you and I have a space where we can support each other and we can be ourselves and it doesn't matter if people criticize us because guess what babe I got you babe I got you babe but a lot of girls don't have that and I think our first step should be to support each other and not tear each other down exactly. I've said a lot of mixed things amen amen girl so yeah, that's what the fluff, I suppose. Yeah. For today. If you'd like to find any of our links, they're all below for what the fluff and for both our personal channels outside what the fluff. All our social media accounts are also down below in the description. Alright guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, share us with your friends and hit that little notification bell so you know every time we post things because we also do what the vlog, which is always just our little side quests that we do. <laughs> but also more importantly, I want to hear your guys' stories. I want to hear what has made you go WTF this week, uh, this month, this year, just in your life. If there's one story where you're just like, what the fuck just happened? And what it's... fucked up fairy tales do you know? Oh yeah. Besides the traditional ones, do you have any from the far east, from the middle east? You're running out of east? The east, <laughs> the northeast, <laughs> the west east. The west east. <laughs> I definitely want to hear those stories from the west east. Guys, you can leave that all in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. So engage, let us know what's going on. And don't forget that we're also on Instagram and Facebook, but that's all down below. or eye around which a dam was built 290 years ago to supply the Bergfried farm with water. gentlemen <laughs> is the highway <laughs> see it's the tiniest wetland
<laughs> the tiniest backland. 420, bro! Really?